All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War, back at you again with another lesson. And as always, I pray Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, he allow these lessons to be edifying to those of the hopeful elect. All right, so what you're seeing on your screen is uh, what the world calls ufos all right but us of the whole four elect you know basically of the knowing followers and servants of yahweh bashim yahweh shai we identify um these objects okay and they are what chariots chariots that the angels ride in these vehicles and um another thing is that these are the vehicles which will deliver the lord's elect in these days or let's say in that day all right once prophecies is fulfilled because it is a prophecy that the the, the angels well let me say yahweh shai okay yahweh by shimmy yahweh shai will send forth his angels to deliver his elect all right and um you know also let me just go right into it matter of fact before i read that let's read um Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 verse 1 it says then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account for his labors when they see it they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for now who is he who is the righteous man that standeth in great boldness. All right, that would be the Lord's elect. All right, starting with the prophets, standing in great boldness. All right, by preaching and prophesizing this truth, this gospel. It says, "Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him." Now we're in the face of the world. We're in the face of Esau. All right, starting with these elites who run the world, these international bankers. And they could see the men of the Lord boldly professing that they are the what? Children and sons of the Heavenly Father. They could see the men of the Lord prophesizing and, you know, telling the world, you know, who are the wicked, which is Esau. So it says, and made no account for his labors, meaning these uh, Edomites who had us in slavery. Okay. They have made no account for our labors. All right. And let me just continue to read. It says, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. What are they going to see? They're going to see the chariots. All right. Which the world call UFOs. All right. And, and guess what? You know how beautiful they may look at a distance, but how horrifying when they bring themselves up close. And especially to those who don't know what they are. All right. And they're not foreign to this earth. They've been here since the ancient of days with the Heavenly Father, which another name for the Lord title is the ancient of days. Okay? They have always been. All right? They're not aliens. All right? With green, uh, big-headed Martians, they call it. You know, in, you know, riding these vehicles. These are, are men, angels. Looks just like the so-called blacks and Latinos. Okay? So anyway, let's go back. Verse 2, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond that they look for. So no matter how many times brothers go out and prophesy and preach, all right, and um, talk about the chariots, the angels of the Lord riding in these vehicles and, and tell you that the Lord is going to deliver them by these chariots, they're not going to believe it until they see it okay they're not going to believe it till they see it and it says when they see it they shall be troubled meaning they're going to be terrified terrified and shall be amazed at the same time being terrified but amazed all right with their their mouth open their jaws drop so to say like the cartoons it says and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for 
and the wicked they mock brothers you know they mock this you know they mock uh the men of the lord being taken up in the chariots matter of fact one of the scoffers i ain't gonna say his name i'm gonna conjure that demon up you know may the most high keep him in the in the dungeon somewhere wherever he at but anyway um he was among the apostles and the lord actually brought forth the chariots and this dev this demon he was there and he saw it and said they were uh uh chinese lant lanterns if i'm saying that right you know it's like he 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 couldn't admit the truth right when it was right in his eyes you know and brothers was call me ashala y'all watch me ashala i could die you know so the lord you know made that man a witness to the truth but he wouldn't even admit it you know right there that shows you how much of a lying spirit is upon uh certain men these scoffers and mockers man you know when you see it right before your eyes and you can't admit the truth you know the only thing you deserve is is death man scriptures say he must know it after death by pain all right and that's pride man pride leadeth to destruction so anyway, it says verse three, and they and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had some time in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. How was he numbered among the children of Yahweh and his lot is among the saints? All right, because you're going to have Israelites that you know, we say speckled bird that may look like, well, scriptures also say Gentiles, all right, Israelite foreigners, which we understand that, you know, some of the elect is not going to all look like the, the tribes, okay? Some of the elect are among the other nations, okay? And they're going to look like some of the other nations with facial features, all right? But their spirit is an Israelite. And if they have the elect, they're going to be praising and worshiping Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So can you imagine, um, you know, just imagine this is this is happening and you got an Edomite that know of the Israelites. And then he look at he looked to his right and he see some Moabite looking, at, uh, let's say Moabite, which is the Chinese uh, man being taken up in a chariot. You know, he, he he's going to say, well, how is he uh, uh, numbered among the Israelites? All right. Because the word saint means Israelite. OK. Does it mean a, um, a um, good Samaritan? You know, someone that helps a lady across the street. Saints. If you are a saint, you're an Israelite, according to the scriptures. So just imagine, man, you seeing um, you. Well, the he the wicked is witnessing brothers being taken up, not just brothers, but women. All right. Those of the elect being taken up and they don't look like your everyday so-called Negro. All right. Or Latino. You know, just to give you an image, you know, our apostles teach us to think and pictures when you read these scriptures. All right. So you got to imagine that, man. It says, verse five, how was he numbered among the children of Yahweh and his lot is among the saints? Therefore, we have erred from the way of truth. And the light of righteousness have not shined unto us. And the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. What have pride profit of us? Or what good have riches with our vaunting brought us? All those things are passed away like a shadow and as a post that hasteth by. Exactly. You know, it reminds me of an Apostle Paul. He said, the fashion of this world shall pass away. You know, everything that he is doing now is going to be wiped off the planet Earth. OK, there will be no remembrance of, of, of his kingdom, except for when the holy day come around, which is the new holy day, when the Lord delivered the children out of the land of the north. All right. And every other land where they were driven to. All right. That's going to end up being a new holy day in the kingdom. All right, this great deliverance as far as the great destruction that's coming upon uh, Esau and uh, you heathens that rule the world and, and two thirds of the Lord's people. All right. So, you know, now I want to go to uh, Revelations 18 and four. All right. It says Revelations 18 and four. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins 
and that ye receive not of her plagues. All right. So when reading this, you have to understand that this is um, John the Revelator. All right. Receiving the revelations. He saw or let's say he heard a voice from heaven. All right. He actually heard this voice. Now, sometimes when you read this face face value, if I should say you would think it means come out of America, you know, in the ways of philosophies or the ways of their religion, you know, the, the uh, ways of man, you know, but it's not talking about that. It's talking about uh, John uh, actually hearing the voice. This is a this is when John uh, saw that uh, deliverance. OK, he says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues, which is the actual voice of the most high. All right. So it's going to be that voice and to prove that. Let me go to uh, Revelations 11. OK, Revelations 11 and 11. It says, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Yahweh entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. OK, and this spirit of life is the truth. OK, it's talking about the word. It came upon the men of the Lord, the prophets, and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. Verse 12. And he heard a great voice from heaven saying, Unto, unto them come up hither and they ascended up into heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them now that cloud is in representation of of the chariot all right the vehicles which uh the, the lord rides in okay he sends across the face of the earth all right yahweh shai who the world ignorantly calls jesus christ he's coming back in these ships matter of fact we call it the fathership you know elder apostle Sahar said it could be possibly one big one big uh giant ship you know or it could be multiple ships that's going to deliver brothers or it could be one big ship that deliver brothers but either way we do know that in through scriptures and precepts the lord is going to send forth these angels to also help destroy babylon the great all right so they're going to be shooting lasers they're going to be destroying zapping people just like you see in the movies because these directors as we say and tell you they get the inspiration from the scriptures and they make movies all right they didn't just create those ideas all right they got it from the scriptures and they didn't put their twist on it man and so this is the cloud okay and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them come up hither and they ascended up into heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them now that great voice from heaven saying unto them is the same voice that John of Patmos, all right, John the Revelator, he heard. Okay, this goes right back to the Revelations 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. All right, so that's the voice in which uh, John of Patmos, or you could say John the Revelator, all right, he heard the voice from out of heaven. And it said, come out of her, my people. All right. So this is that uh, voice from the Most High. And I heard a great voice from out of heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up into heaven in the cloud and, and their enemies beheld them. Verse 13. And the same hour there was a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand and the remnant were afraid of and gave glory to the Most High. Yahweh of heaven now when it says in the same hour was there a great earthquake this earthquake is going to happen through the ways of thermonuclear destruction because there will be a, a third world war all right a war which is called armageddon all right and uh and the precept that come to mind is that uh isaiah 24 and 19 and 20 you know the lord said the earth will uh rock to and fro matter of fact uh i'm gonna read it it says uh the earth is utterly broken that uh the earth is utterly broken down the earth is clean dissolved the earth is moved exceedingly the earth shall rail to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgressions thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again all right so this earthquake 
this great earthquake here, as it says, and in the same hour there was a great earthquake, is going to be done by the ways of thermonuclear destruction. All right. And I'm going to grab another precept, which is uh, Revelation 6 and 12. It says, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell upon the earth even as a fig tree cast of her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind his point and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of her place all right so by the ways of thermonuclear destruction it's gonna you know destroy but well, scriptures say it's gonna shake the earth to and fro all right so what's gonna happen through that is life all right, life is going to die and new life is going to reemerge. Okay, it's going to destroy completely and utterly what you call America, which is known in the scriptures as Babylon the Great. So that's that great earthquake. In the same hour, there was a great earthquake and the 10th part of the city fell. That 10th part of the city is talking about North America. All right, now the apostles brought this out years ago. And um, when you look up FEMA regions of United States, and here we are, we have a picture here. You can see you have 10 parts, all right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, you know, which lines up perfectly, you know, with what? The 10th part, all right? You even got more down here, more pictures to show you that all of... Babylon, the great, a.k.a. America, is going to be destroyed. All right. So you go back, it says Revelations 11 and 13. And in the same hour was there a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake was slain of men, 7,000. And the remnant were afraid of and gave glory to Yahweh of heaven. All right, this place being Babylon the Great, meaning this whole entire uh, land, landmass of what you call North America is going to be destroyed. All right, and I'll uh, one more scripture and I'll end it with that. Like I said, I wanted to make it quick. Second Peter 3 and uh, 10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, and in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the element shall melt with fur and heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of person are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasten unto the coming of the day of the Most High. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. And the element shall melt with fur and heat. It says nevertheless. We, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom, given unto him have written unto you okay uh let me get another one that come in mind is uh amos 9 and 8 it says behold the eyes of yahweh are upon the sinful kingdom and i will destroy it from off the face of the earth saving i will not utterly destroy the house of jacob say of yahweh meaning the elect will not be destroyed so there's a part of Jacob, all right, an election that's going to be saved through Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. But the rest is going to be destroyed, all right? And that sinful kingdom, all right, you can say in this time is, is what? Babylon the Great. He said, I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Now, verse 9, for lo, I will command and I will shift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is shift in a sheaf. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. See, it says all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us.
All right, so Lord willing, I hope this lesson was edifying. I wanted to make it quick, uh, uh, simple, and straight to the point. All right, the chariots of the Lord, which uh, Yahweh Shai will be coming back in, all right, to deliver the elect. And uh, Lord willing, you know, this is our uh, race, which we hope and humbly and, and uh, patiently, long-sufferingly um, enduring you know, in this great fight of ours to get on these ships, man. Hopefully the Lord show mercy and um, remember our works, you know, and our works prove our faith. So I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.